Today, the Bank of Ghana left its key rate at 29%, citing inflation risks to the upside. Tomorrow, the Central Bank of Nigeria will announce its rate decisions, while South Africa and Mozambique central banks are on tap on Wednesday. And there is more to chew across the markets in earnings news. My guest on all of this is Johnson Chuku, a market professional and the group CEO at Carry Asset Management. We thank you for connecting in tonight on Arise Exchange. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Welcome to the show. Ghana Central Bank decided to hold rates at 29% today. Uh, how is this season of hold decisions, especially by key African economies? What do you expect? Well, I think for most African economies, um, they begin they, they are beginning to see a moderation in inflation rate. And um, of course, they are, you have to balance between uh, fighting inflation as well as um, supporting economic growth. At the current level, most African economies are struggling with economic growth. And uh, the issue of inflation has begun to moderate. Uh, your energy, energy costs globally have begun to moderate. Uh, food prices elsewhere in the world have also begun to moderate. So it's um, in tandem with what's happening globally. You can see even Western countries are no longer tightening. In fact, it's now been speculated, speculated that the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank and the British, uh, the uh, Bank of England, may begin to loosen in the next couple of months. So, in tandem with that, I think African economies have also seen some level of uh, moderation in inflationary pressure, other than a country like Nigeria, and that's obviously why the countries like Ghana and uh, other uh, African countries are considering or already adopting a hold position as it relates to tightening of interest rates. So Nigeria's central bank will decide tomorrow, Tuesday, what's your outlook? Uh, consensus was that there'll be another rate hike in the corner. We did 400 basis points in January, just exactly about a month ago. What's your take? Uh, Boston, I think it will be too soon for the Central Bank to further hike, uh, um, tighten. Remember that the last uh, MPC meeting was just a month ago, and the full effect of that, uh, the policy announcements are yet to be fully felt. Uh, as it stands today, you can't really say the economy has fully absorbed the implication of the 400 basis point increase in monetary policy rate and the 12.5% increase in, in cash reserve ratio. Um, there's always what you call lag effect, and that means that some of the impact of these policies will begin to manifest in subsequent months. So I think it will be too early for the Monetary Policy Committee to tighten again just barely a month after the main announcement. Remember that the practice was not for them to meet on a monthly basis. There was always a two-month period which was to allow for the effect of their policies to begin to permeate in the economy. So I think tightening further just a, a month after they had increased it by 400 basis points and increased card reserve ratio to 45% uh, percent, maybe too soon, and uh, one, the most appropriate thing is to wait and weigh the impact of the policy pronouncement they made in, the, in, in, in February. We'll get back to Nigeria in just uh, a few minutes, but let's uh, move on to South Africa's Reserve Bank. The Central Bank will hold its monetary policy meeting uh, on Wednesday, and the outlook was a hold of the, of the ripple rate. What do you think about South Africa looking to hold its rate? Inflation uh, is about 4.5 percent. That's the target of the Central Bank. The last figure we had on inflation was about 5.6 percent. You know, mostly, like I said in my opening comments, that we are beginning to see inflation moderating in a number of countries, including some African countries. And as you, as you speak of South Africa, we have already seen material moderation in inflation rates. So the priority of the central bank will now be economic growth to improve productivity and therefore to bring that interest rate and encourage the private sector to borrow and in, uh, invest so that more jobs will be created. And I think that is the likely thing that will happen in the near future. But of course, we are not likely going to see a switch from a tightening to a loosening. So the first thing you see is a transition period where the central bank will hold rate and watch the economic trajectory. And if the growth or if the inflation moderation continues, you will see a loosening in the subsequent months. So it's in tandem with what I said earlier that we are seeing inflation moderate in many countries, including African countries, and uh, those countries' central banks have the most appropriate policy direction of at least in the meantime, hold rates and watch market variables. And if the trend continues in lower interest in inflation rates, they will have to uh, loosen to allow for uh, stronger economic growth. 
Well, let's get back to Nigeria's front. I'm sure you keep a permanent eye on, on the central bank on a daily basis, so regularly. Do you think the monetary and FX policies of the central bank so far are okay with local investors, even as we see the Naira recovering very steadily? Well, most of what I would say is that most uh, local investors are happy, are quite pleased that Naira has gained uh, some ground against the, uh, the greenback. And uh, we all pray that that trajectory continues. But it's too early in the day. A couple of factors you have to look at. I always say that managing the economy is a very delicate balancing act. The current policies on tightening, where uh, the cash reserve rate is 45 percent, um, the monetary policy rate is 22.5 percent, 22.75 percent, uh, will imply that in the near future, in the couple of months to come, you may see a significant slowdown in economic activities, which could spiral into higher level of unemployment, uh, low productivity, slower economic growth. And until we see the full weight, so it is easy to say one today we are seeing uh, Naira strengthen, but it will come at some cost. So we have to weigh those costs when those costs begin to manifest. And that's when we can say we are quite happy or not happy with the policies. Uh, it's too early in the day. Uh, what we have seen in the FX rate is uh, salutary, but we need to wait and see the impact on productive activities. Well, well, what you're doing is that you're punching at my next question because the first quarter market ends on Friday this week. So I'm sure you're looking at everything so far since we started on January the 1st. Do you think the market as at today in Nigeria has a clear sense of direction of where both the monetary and fiscal policies and actions are going for the rest of the year? You know, Boston, we are coming from a very volatile period, uh, economic period, uh, management period. We have seen multiple policy pronouncements um, we've seen some of them not having the most, 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 most intended positive impact. So I think we are still going to see some level of uncertainty that it relates to the market outlook. It will be too uh, optimistic for anybody to say, look, we have actually uh, gone past the worst period. Um, we need to watch what these policies will uh, bring in the near future. Like I did say earlier, um, we see, we've seen appreciation in the local currency. Um, hopefully that will lead to some moderation in inflation rate, but you have to look at the impact of productivity. You have to look at uh, the fact that the economy is still very great at a very fragile uh, growth rate, and that any little thing can tip it to the negative. And the impact of a negative economic growth may outweigh the benefits of fighting inflation. So I think we are still going to be dealing with multiple policy pronouncements, policy, multiple policy actions, that it will be too early for anybody to say, look, we have charted a direction that the economy will follow in the, in the main part of the year. All right, let's uh, sum it up with uh, the MTN Group numbers out of South Africa. Today, Nigeria is its largest, biggest market on the continent. We, the, the currency devaluation punched about 72.3% whole in these earnings for last year. That's as far as the MTN Group across Africa is concerned. Give me your thoughts on this. What do you expect on this big telco going forward in 2024? Well, I think um, they will have to weather through it. Uh, good thing they have going for them is their revenues are quite strong. What happened would ordinarily be a one-off um, uh, loss position or a one-off write-off uh, or a change loss. Because um, in the first place, we've seen some level of gains of the Naira. I was worried when Naira was turning towards 1,800, 1,900, because the implication would have been that these companies would have logged in similar exchange losses in the current year. But if the Naira closed at current level, they were they are still going to record exchange losses. Uh, we've seen some companies actually uh, um, switch or swing to negative share of that fund, the lack of lacks of Nestle. But for MTM, they have a very robust uh, revenue uh, sources, uh, data revenue, uh, call uh, revenue, and then they have these their uh, um, uh, payment uh, mobile banking system that are gradually be, uh, being adopted by uh, consumers. So for them. It will be a one-off thing. Hopefully, Naira will strengthen back to what it was in December so that they wouldn't need to lock in further exchange losses. But what, what matters most is the robustness of their revenue. And I think there is nothing to worry about the likes of MTN suffering temporary losses at the end of exchange rate movement. Oh, great. Thank you so much for those insights on the markets and economy, as always. Thank you so much, Johnson Chico, this group CEO at Carry Asset Management. Have a great evening. Of course, we've got a central bank monetary policy tomorrow to watch. Thank you. Have a great evening out there. Bye.